Hello and welcome back to episode four of a wee chat. We are once again coming back talking about a defeat, but I'm sure it'll be okay because alongside me I've got the wonderful Seb Ward and also Charlie Hatch. Guys, how you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, getting along. Getting along. Um, a li- well, we're recording this a few days after Watford. Uh, if we rec- were recording this on the night of Watford, it could have been a lot different, but we're in high spirits. Uh, Everton coming up at the weekend, but sadly we do have to discuss the Watford game. Actually, actually we don't. Should we just skip that Wat- Watford game, guys? Um, What's there to talk about? <laughs> well, you know how Norwich fans love a good rant. That's well, what we're here for. Uh, exactly. Um, Seb, take it away then. Let's start the rant. Oh, um, I mean, <laughs> I was there with you at uh, uh, Vicarage Road and it really wasn't a very good experience. The first half was poor and the second half was even worse. We seemed to just disregard all attempts to play good football and, and with the wind, which played completely against us in terms of we tried a, a long ball strategy in the second half and it was completely suicidal from Alex Neal and his players let him down as well. So that sort of mixture of all these different factors coming together. I mean, previously it's been a case of little mistakes uh, foiling a good overall performance. Today, or rather Saturday, was a, a case of a poor performance with poor mistakes such as Alex Tetty, uh, poor pre- individual performances from Bennett, the song, and pretty much everybody, <laughs> and a tactical disaster from Alex Neal. So, all in all, not very good. Well, except for that, it wasn't too bad, was it? Oh, yeah, it was a great game. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, you say other games we've been let down on, on individual mistakes, and yes, we were very poor f- for, the, for the whole 90, really, but... Charlie, I mean, the only reason that we conceded two goals, one was a, a horrible individual mistake um, from Alex Tete. No idea what he's trying to do there, trying to turn his man. Um, and then the other one was Sebastian Masson getting turned. I mean, it wasn't like a dominant performance from Watford, was it? No, I, I think it was the actual statistics said it was 50-50 possession-wise. But... It's kind of funny. I got a, a video. It's uh, the 2015-16, or 20, what is it, 2005-2006 review, right? So it's literally the other day was equivalent to that. I mean, there's the trash on the pitch with the wind and everything, and it was just sloppy. Um, mm. I mean, Watford didn't do anything to merit scoring two goals. I don't think either team really deserved to score. But then you look at it and you think, well, neither team could compete complete passes. It wasn't until the 92nd or 93rd minute where Watford had like bunkered down and started actually hitting the ball around and making some possession out of it. Mm. It was just really dull. And I feel bad for you guys because you had to go. I mean, watching it, I was starting to lose interest because it just, I think we had one shot on target because Robbie mm. Brady put something in the 70th minute like he always does. Um, but other than that, there was nothing going for it. Yeah, well, once again, we handed them their first goal and but before that, I mean, both teams weren't really playing too well. I don't think either team was coping that well with the conditions. And both teams found it difficult to get the ball down and play some actually decent football. But, you know, we, we gave them that goal and that from that they gained confidence. I think Dini, that was his fourth in four. And from that, you know, he was a, a real leader at the front. And him and Igalo thrived off the uh, inadequacies of Bennett and Basong and uh, the non-existent midfield. I mean, Housen had uh, 29 touches. He went completely missing, as opposed to Tetti. Wow. Tetti had 76. Dorans had 52. So he had half as much as Dorans there. Um, uh, and yeah, the midfield really didn't dominate at all. And you know, from there, I think in the second half they did try and play some good football. And the difference was to Norwich, as we've seen throughout the season, they had leadership up front mm. and a sort of a willingness and eagerness to get the ball to get the ball back when they lost it and then to push forward with a strategy which we did not show in that in the second half and well didn't really show it in the first half or at least it was not executed at all well um and yeah the the, the deserved side won the game and they had an offside goal which was onside and you know, Rudd had to make a couple of other good good saves, so they could have won three or four now, in my opinion. So, Definitely. honest question. Do you think... Now, when I was watching it, I thought Igalo was fantastic. I, I understand that Bennett and Basong were poor, but do you think he had just an overall good performance? <sighs> Igalo? 
I because I thought he was a, a he was beast enough. I there. thought Ibala I mean, was good. Yeah. Yeah, because he, um, would... he he perhaps wasted a couple of opportunities. Although I do think Rudd uh, gave a good account of himself and made a couple of really good saves. But um, yeah, I think he was unlucky not to score more than one goal, and that's why you know he rips his shirt off at the end in relief more than anything. And you could tell how much of a big result it was for Watford. I think I think the difference was, I mean, we're in the Premier League now and we've seen far too many individual mistakes that, that have led to goals. I mean, I, haven't, I can't really remember any goals this season that have come from actual decent play from the opposition. I mean, we've chucked away so many points from mistakes that just shouldn't yeah. shouldn't be happening and that's not down to not having good enough players. That's just being stupid in possession, not retaining possession. I mean... I tweeted out, and I think it was about the 20th minute, saying we've been fairly dominant so far. I mean, it, it depends how you how you determine the word um, dominant, but I thought we'd, we'd kept possession fairly well. I mean, we hadn't done much with it. We had didn't have a shot with it, but Watford were, were really struggling to, to get the ball, and whether that was down to the weather or anything. But, you know, we were certainly in that game for the first half of the first half, and then we give away that stupid, stupid penalty against the run of play. And that's when, um, you know, that's when you, it's going to be tough to get back into the game. And yes, of course we need more players in January, but that game at the weekend, we could have picked points up from it. It wasn't that Watford were just better than us. It was our just, just lack of ability to, to play football. Um, yeah. I, th I think that's been the case for a lot of games this season. I mean, I don't think the Premier League is as strong as it's been in previous years. Um, the, t the top teams certainly aren't as strong as they have been in previous years. You might, I mean, you look back at Chelsea, you look back at Manchester City, both of them games we should have got something from. Um, we were on par with them for, for a large periods of the game. And yes, I know we need to sign players in January because if we don't, we're probably going to go down. But it isn't, at the moment, the lack of quality that we have in the team. It's just a lack of... I don't know, just these mistakes that keep cropping up, whether that be the lack of concentration or anything. But, Charlie, I mean, we come to, to Watford. It was Agallo and Dini that scored. They were dominant, dominant in the championship last year. They've already scored a lot of goals this season. I think it, they've created something like 27 chances for each other this season, more than any other partnership in the Premier League. They've got a good strike force. We haven't. That was the difference in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And it, I think going into the season, I was a little concerned for how they would do because I think they signed the most players of any club mm. in the off season. But it, if you watched the match the other day, they were in no ways out of chemistry. You know, they didn't look different than Norwich. And that's the big issue because I think if you look at Norwich's side, regardless of who they put out, there's, I don't want to call it a rock, but there's like a general understanding and you know what you're going to get out of people. Like, you know, Robbie Brady will be consistent. Um, Basong, other than, you know, yesterday or uh, Saturday, is usually consistent. And I think out of what we saw the other day is just Watford, I thought, wanted it more. And I don't know if that's because they had the wind in the first half and they just were attacking and Norwich was just, you know, holding off until – Half time, try to keep it nil nil, and then attack the second half. But it was almost like by the time the second half rolled around, it didn't feel like they would even try to be able to muster a point. I think belief certainly has to come into it, but I'm not buying into this excuse of the weather. I think Alex Neal came out with it. It's not like him to make excuses. But Seb, I mean, come on, the the, the weather's the same for both teams. We can't be blaming the wind, can we? Oh no, let's not blame the wind. But it's our failure then to cope with the conditions. And in my opinion, the decision to take Redmond off at half time, one, because Redmond was our sort of only source of width in terms of the formation. You've got Brady on one side, Redmond on the other. That keeps a nice symmetry. You take him off, um, we have to go to a 4 4 2 with Housen on the right, and he's not suited. We know that. Yeah. He's not a naturally right sided uh, player. And then. Of course, we've got Graben playing so poorly in the first half. I, I don't want to scapegoat Graben as, you know, regularly he gets abuse that he's not, you know, doesn't deserve. Partly because we don't really like his attitude, we don't like his, you know, doesn't have much charisma in front of the press, so he's not a very likable person. But in terms of actual footballing ability, he didn't really show much. It's, it's not mm. like we're attacking him because we, we know of his past of the Rotherham saga. He really didn't play very well. I mean, he had 10 touches in the first half. 
two of those came from the first kickoff <laughs> and the kickoff after Watford's first goal. So, and he he had no aerial duels uh, during the whole of the entire match. Um, I mean, it doesn't. It's it not just, pretty reading, is it? I mean, I don't no, agree it with him. Pre- it wasn't pretty watching. <laughs> it, he didn't seem to chase balls. He didn't seem to jump for headers. I, don't, I just feel like. Obviously, he can't do everything. He can't run at players non-stop, but I feel like he can give a bit more in a, a, a more aggressive manner that you see from Jerome. Even if I'm not saying he's a world beater or anything, I don't think we've got a, a really top-class striker. And I think that's one of the problems because we don't have a a, a Dini and a Gallo who's going to be owning the the team sheet, getting his name on there, and you know you're going to get a really solid performance. Yeah. The problem was grabbing. I'd, I'd, to be fair, I would have started him because he, you know, he got the goal that Alex Neil put him in for last week, but he did not deliver against Watford. Uh, it's it's very strange, isn't it, how you can go from so good to so bad in yeah. in the space of a week, really. Um, I mean, I I don't I didn't agree with booing Graben off. I think if you're going to boo no. Graben off, you you need to Absolutely. boo every other single player off because everyone was as bad as each other except for Declan Rudd, um, and I don't think it was. I mean, I agree, Seb, I would have started grabbing it. It'd be very harsh not to start him in that game. But I think the way you set up, uh, or the way Alex Neal set up, wasn't the correct way to, to fit Lewis Graben into your team. But at the same time, as you said, Lewis Graben needs to, to work harder, needs to be more of a presence to try and fit in to that system because it's not every week that the manager is going to set up the the whole system for you um, and he needs to take these opportunities I mean he's got a few other strikers around him yes as you said they're not world beaters but they're certainly half decent strikers and as good if not better than Graben um, and if you're not putting in a, in a real shift then you're not going to get back into that team and I thought although we will we were still poor I thought McCarney brought a lot more to the game he was a lot more um, well, I'm not sure if you've got the stats on hand, but he seemed like he won a lot more headers. He had that chance that he created for himself off the back post. And I thought he looked a bit uh, better. Yeah, Ember Carney won four aerial duels as opposed to Graben's zero and Jerome's one. Mm, I mean, that's pretty decent considering he was only, only on the pitch for like 45 minutes. And I thought he stretched the Watford defence a bit more as well. But I, I, I'm just going to put this game down to an off day. I think Everton is going to be a massive test, but... I think we've performed really well all season. And I think that was our only game, probably except for Southampton, although we, we were down to 10 men that game, that nobody at all turned up. It's very rare that you get that. And I think when it's like that and like you've got Robbie Brady who's missing opportunities and, and just isn't that great and Redmond not turn up, I think you just have to just to write it off and move on. Um, but Charlie, I mean, Declan Rudd came in for, for John Ruddy again. There were a lot of rumours circular about, um, circulating about on Twitter. I'm not sure if anyone's getting this team news before and leaking it out. But, I mean, I saw a lot of strong rumours going about and a few of my mates were messaging me. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But how impressed were you with Declan Rudd and, and should he be starting against Everton this week? Yeah, I think he did well. I mean, uh, I, when it was going back and forth between Ruddy and Rudd, I think one of the big issues is how influential can it be on the on the pitch? And he, you know, the saves that I think that Ruddy does a good job with and therefore he should keep his job, Rudd was making those. So uh, I, there wasn't really a big drop-off, I didn't think, in Talon at all. And I think he did well. Uh, he was unlucky, obviously, on the penalty. Uh, the second goal, I mean, there's nothing he could really do. But I remember a couple times he would come out and use his body a bit more than you might see from Ruddy. And, I mean, he did, he played well. Uh, against Goodis- at Goodison against Everton. So you'd like to think that maybe that could carry over. I'd, either way, I think you could go one way or another, but Rudd didn't do anything to say he should be on the bench. Definitely. And, and Seb, it's good to see Alex nearly even giving Declan Rudd the opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, I think that shows bravery and that no one has a safe position in the team. And I think that is the sort of attitude you need to approach a team like Norwich with. Um, but... I think he's done enough to start next week. Uh, I think his kicking was a little bit off, but on the whole, he was pretty good. And as we've said previously, he did really well in the cup competition. So he he's earned his start, and thankfully he's taken the chance as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, is there anything else you want to add? I, mean, I don't really want to speak about this game 
too much longer. I mean, is there any other positives that came from it or just really not? I guess what I would say is, and I mean, this could be, you know, an open question. Does Norwich actually have a player that is influential other than Basong and Brady? And I'm not saying that to, you know, go down on anybody because obviously there are a lot of guys that come together and it work well, but we don't really have those guys up front like Dini or Igalo that can boss the match around. I did see someone on Twitter saying that they wish we still had uh, Bradley Johnson. No. Well, I don't agree. I don't agree no. with that, but I do feel we are missing a leadership quality in one of our players. We need someone there who can actually take this team and get it together. Because if you have a proper captain material in there, I don't think Teddy's that man. He, you know, he did not lead by example whatsoever. Um, and yeah, we, we just lacked some real guile and belief to get something at, at Watford, which, you know, it was we could have got something, but. You know, we didn't put the performance that warranted that or deserved that whatsoever. That captain material is big gaz. He was on the was he on the subs bench or? He was on the subs bench and he got dropped for Teddy. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, I mean, apparently there's there's an injury to to Wes Houlihan as well, which could keep him out for this weekend's game. I mean, that could prove quite a a, a nasty blow, couldn't it, for, for for the weeks coming up? Definitely. I mean, having him and Jarvis out at the same time is two of our most creative players and it really does limit us I think we missed him and or Jarvis in that game we didn't have the options coming off the bench but it is nice to see that Vadis Ojija Ofoe is getting more of a chance now hopefully we can see more than just a five minute or ten minute cameo appearance from him because you know he's supposed to be more of a, an attacking player and he did well at Rotherham so mm. hopefully just like Rudd, he'll get his chance as well. Yeah, definitely. And I tried to start the chant once again on Saturday and no one was having any of it. So I was left like a mug. I sang a verse on my own and, <laughs> and ended in embarrassment. Anyway. Well, at least at least we did get through all 12 days of Huckabee. Yes, that was that was a decent little rendition, wasn't it? Yeah, and the um, Super Ryan Bennett, he pushed Sanchez in the pit or however it went. <laughs> yeah. Along those lines. There was a guy at the back... Um, in the block I was sitting, who was just screaming abuse at the linesman for the whole game. He was completely off his head. It was brilliant. But eventually he stopped in the 70th minute because he'd lost his voice. Um, <laughs> so I admire the um, the determination to try and get the linesman, who was about 100 yards away, to try and hear him. Um, unfortunately, he gave up. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave the last words on this Watford game to Robin Saintie. Um, we were pretty shell-shocked. Um, it was fair to say this interview did go on for three minutes, but it was basically us just looking at each other, wondering what had happened. Um, anyway, we got some words out of Robin, and he didn't really understand the system that Alex Neil was trying to play. Joined here with Robin Saintly after what was a horrendous one, uh, well, 2 0 defeat to Watford. What do you make of that? It was shocking, Jack, wasn't it? It was an awful performance. There was no passion, there was very little football. I mean, it was, a, it was an awful game. Um, just generally but our performance was, was dire I mean, you can tell from our tone of language how bad it was I was just well I think we're shell shocked aren't we I, I think you know we've, we've come here today expecting much more than that um, but the team haven't turned up I mean the team on paper that was probably one of our strongest teams I'm very happy with that and sloppy penalty and we're out of the game yeah I thought we looked very much uh, well not in control of the game but certainly we seem to be in control of whatever Watford we're trying to create. Yeah. Um, the thing that struck me is that we played with two wide players. We played with Redmond on the right and Brady on the left. Yet yeah, most of our play was inside the, the parameters of the, the penalty areas. Yeah. We didn't get enough width. Watford had congested midfield. Um, there were bodies everywhere. We couldn't work our way through them. Obviously, the wind made it difficult. You could see that. But we just had no width. And... Uh, I don't understand playing two wide players and, and then not getting them to the touchline. I mean, no, I think uh, if you were being polite about Graben's performance, you'd say it was diffident. <laughs> I can think of others, <laughs> but diffident will probably have to do for the uh, purposes of a family broadcast. Um, we've, we've got to pick it up. We've got to get something out of the Everton game because yep. obviously the Manchester United game is going to be pretty tough. Spurs mm. is going to be tough. Uh, and then we've got Villa sandwiched between. So, but yeah, we've got to start picking up points. We can't sit around feeling sorry for ourselves. Um, you know, week after week, it, it's an individual area that, 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 that kills us. I mean, 
you know, t I love Teddy to bits, but he's a, an international player and what he did was just brainless. There was no invention. I mean, we, we, well, we played like Ipswich Town. That's how bad it was. So there was Robin. Um, he's normally a very optimistic fan, but I'd travelled back with him and he was not happy with the things uh, that's going on at the moment at the club. Uh, and he really does want to see some some changes um, in January with, with the players and, and trying to get some real quality in. I mean, let, this, we'll make this the last point. Um, Charlie, what do you make of Alex Neal's tactics at the moment? I mean, he came in as a very attacking manager. It's obvious that he wants to play that style of football. Um, do you agree with him going slightly more defensive in order to try and get some points? And do you think the, the, the current squad we've got is, is holding him back from doing um, or, or playing his preferred attacking style? I think the squad has definitely held him back, but... To be honest, he's just trying to do what he can to survive. Uh, when I was in, I went to a football conference in Brooklyn last month, and uh, the Bournemouth chairman was there. He said, we want to be the most attacking-minded people, but not the best attacking team to get relegated. So mm -hmm. I think that kind of goes well with Norwich at the moment because, okay, let's try to go up and win some goals. You get two goals in a match, but how many are you giving up because the defense is a little shell-shocked and out of position? So... Uh, it's kind of upsetting to buckle down because there's a lot more freedom in the championship. But, I mean, we all knew it was coming. I think I think the last match against Watford was the first time where, other than Newcastle, where I was thinking, what is going on here? Uh, mm. And I don't know if that's just the players didn't turn up. Um, but in general, I think there's once you start watching the match and it starts developing, there's a pretty clear mindset that the club is going with. And... I don't think anyone's given him a hard time. It's frustrating, but I wouldn't blame any of the losses or the poor run of form on the manager. Yeah, definitely. I saw a few people tweeting out saying um, if we would have kept this attacking style like Bournemouth have, we, we might have got a bit of luck and a few wins under our belt like Bournemouth. Obviously, they beat Chelsea at the weekend, but I think that's complete bollocks. I think you need to sometimes just sacrifice the way you play. It's not like we're suddenly playing Chris Hewton style football. We know Alex Neal wants to play attacking football, but he's, he's a versatile manager. He knows what he needs to do to try and get points. And we saw earlier in the season, we were playing attacking football and it just wasn't working. We were giving away a lot of goals on the break. I mean, the Leicester game, if we would, if we would have played a more conservative style, I think we would have probably beat them. Same against Stoke. Um, probably not conceded as many against Crystal Palace and, and got something from there. So I think... A lot of the games earlier in the season when we were playing that attacking style of football didn't work. We then sort of shored up a bit. The defence looks a lot better. Um, let's disregard that, the, that Watford game. But except for that, I think we have looked better trying to find that balance. And I think we nailed that against Arsenal. So I think anyone saying that Alex Neal needs to bring back that attacking style just needs to take a look at the current squad we've got and realise that we're not capable of playing such an attacking, um, offensive style that maybe Bournemouth can, can get away with on occasion. Let's not forget as well, Bournemouth are below us in the table. Just because they beat Chelsea um, doesn't mean they're suddenly um, going to stay up. But anyway, let's get on to some quick fire player ratings for the Watford game. Um, once again, I'm very unprepared and haven't got the team sheet yet up, so I'm hoping one of you guys have. I have indeed. Ah, oh, yes. Would you like me to go first? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, Ruddy, 7. Wisdom, 5. Basong, 4. Bennett, no, Basong, 3. Bennett, 4. Olsen, 4. 5. Redmond, 6. Dorans, 5. Tetty, 4. Housen, 4. Brady, 4. Graben, 4. Embakani, 5. Jerome, 5. Ajija. Five. Rudd, six. Wisdom, five. Bennett, five. Basong, four. Olsen, five. Tete, four for the mishap. Dorans, five. Redmond, five. Housen, five. Brady, uh, we'll give him five. And Graben, five. Embakani, six. Just so he had some creativity. Jerome, five. Vadis, six. We'll keep it. Keeping it nice with Vadis. Rudd, seven. Wisdom, six. Bennett, four. Basong, three. Olsen. I don't really see much of Olsen. Um, five. Redmond, four. Dorans, four. Tete, three. Housen, four. Brady, four. Graben, four. Adija, uh, five. 
Jerome, six, and Bacani, seven. I, th I mean, there's no real standout in there except for Declan Rudd. But in terms of outfield players, I think Bacani was probably the best and he was only on the pitch for 45 minutes. Um, it wasn't great. But anyway, if you guys listening um, want an input or maybe you just want to forget about it, we don't blame you if you do. Um, you can tweet us. All of our Twitters will be in the description of the YouTube video. And if you're listening via SoundCloud, then I assume you've probably come from Twitter, so you know our handles anyway. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, next up, FA Cup tie. That's happened. Um, we've drawn Manchester City at home. What a joy. Um, Seb, probably the worst draw we could have got. Yeah, I mean, I was watching the, the live draw and just thinking... City are still in there, Chelsea are still in there, mm. United are still in there, and every time our ball didn't get chosen, you just knew it was coming. And I, I mean, I was hoping for either Ipswich away, Middlesbrough away, Leeds away, I think those would all be fun, or something silly like Carlisle, even though their pitch is currently underwater. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, we've ended up with City, so yeah, it's, it's not a great draw, is it? Because it... it if we if we want to win it, we're gonna to have to play a good team, and then that will yeah. detract from the Premier League, and we may just get thrashed, and that'll help confidence, won't it? It's just really crap, isn't it? I mean, I don't I don't actually think I'm here for this game. I think I'm probably gonna be on holiday, which is probably a good thing because tickets will be like twenty quid. Um, but yeah, I really wanted like well, the four teams that were left in at the time, I think were our City, Brighton, and Hull. I would have loved Brighton away. Because Brighton away is a good away day anyway, plus Chris Hewton's Barmy Army. Um, we would have probably lost there, but it would have been a lot more fun than losing like 3-0 to City at home, which is probably going to happen. Um, but Charlie, I mean, as Seb said, we're going to have to, well, we're going to have to try and play a good team. Even if Man City play their fourth team, it's probably still worth like 200 million. Um, it's not good, is it? No, I, I want to see a cup run. I think... If anybody learned anything from Wembley, they all wanted to go back to it. And uh, if that meant we would have played a better side early on against Everton, I don't know. Um, yeah, City, obviously there's nothing positive out of that. Uh, and it, well, Because even if someone gets hurt or something, like Sergio Aguero will be out because he gets hurt all the time. But yeah. even with that in, in mind, I mean, how they reshape the tactics, you don't want to just say completely overlook it because it doesn't matter. But... I think it's the first time where uh, relegation thoughts have started to creep in because it's, okay, well, maybe we can put on a good cup run, and then you see that, and you're left wondering, so what's going to be positive the next couple weeks? Mm. Yeah, it's, this, this podcast is just turning really depressing. <laughs> if, if any of you guys listened to um, the podcast we done last year, Canary Talk, I can remember under Neil Adams, it was just like this every week. And <laughs> well, G Gary O'Neill is going to counteract that by saying on Twitter, good draw, hashtag, we got this. Yes, Big Gaz, we there love that. Are. We love that. Big Gaz is the hero of this podcast. She's pulling us through every week. I love the optimism, Big Gaz. Um, unfortunately, I don't agree with you. But who knows? Imagine a Gar Gary O'Neill last minute winner down the Barclay. <laughs> just absolute scenes. Um, I mean, it could be a, a win. All the Man City fans I've, I've seen on Twitter also aren't looking forward to it. It's a long trip from them. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll know, Seb, it's, it's a long old trip down from Manchester. Um, oh, yeah. Will you be coming down? Uh, probably not. No, no I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to be a cold January um, Saturday, I assume. But yeah, that's probably the FA Cup gone for another season. What a shame. Um, anyway, the question of the week, um, as always, we like to have a, a bit of a fun question, is if you were pulled over for speeding in the car, obviously, um, what player would you like on the passenger side? Now, I tweeted this out uh, a little while back and we've got some responses, um, the usual faces. Uh, Sean Hussey put Big Dave. He'd probably just sit there and grunt. Um, not sure if that would really help um, too well. Alex Butcher said a certain Irishman. Assume that's probably Wes Houlihan, maybe. Not sure. Um, responses have <laughs> been pretty weak so far. Let's hope they get better. Um, Carl, at, oh, Carl's got three responses here. I'm not sure if that's cheating. I think you can only have one. Um, 
he started off with, I certainly wouldn't like Kyle Lafferty because he'd start abusing the officer and making the situation worse. Um, yeah, that's probably true. This was um, quite good from Adam Lambert saying, grabbing so he can take the blame for that uh, just as he does with everything else at the club. I got yeah. one. It's uh, Ivan Adcock goes, Stephen Whitaker because everyone would say it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Carl said, definitely not Alex Neal because he'd end up getting me points. That's quite a clever one. That's like good. That. That's good. Um, Jack Totally Tete says, Mbukani, who would want to mess with him? Probably no one. Um, who else have we got? The Harry <laughs> Green one is quite good. Oh, Harry Green's always coming up with it. Um, first of all, though, we'll go to Chris Stones. He put, why um, wouldn't want grabbing this. He would do a runner out of the passenger sh um, seat and leave me in shit. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know how we always come back to this Rotherham situation and grabbing, but we always do. Uh, Harry Green says, or at Harry NCFC, I mean, he's been on this uh, he's won game it for, the for a little while now. Yeah. So um, he says, the Murphy twins, because when the officer asks them to step out of the car, you can be adamant that there's only one and accuse the policeman of being drunk. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah, clever. Clever from Harry Green. So I think that's it. Oh no, um, Alan Cole, he's put Wes or Robbie Brady because they would have had twice as much as I had by that point. Hmm. No. Charlie, Charlie, do you want to pick a winner out of that lot? Uh, I did like Ivan's and then uh, I like Chris Stone's. Those two are, uh, well even anything about grabbing is you already know it's going to yeah. be something. So. so should we give it to... Should we give it to Ivan, just because he brought up Stephen Whitaker and he's a bit of a forgotten man? Yeah, there we go. Congratulations, Ivan Adcock, on winning the question of the week. I'm sure your family is very proud of you. Um, anyway, that's sort of last week gone. We now move on to Everton up this weekend. I believe it's our first game ever on BT Sport, I think. I might be wrong, um, but that's cool. Really? Don't ask me, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so yeah, Jake Humphrey, um, back to his, his home city. Um, so I'm sure he'll be at Carroll Road uh, enjoying it. But yeah, Everton, um, Seb, I think they're playing as we record this at the moment, and I believe it's still nil-nil. Um, I mean, they've got Lukaku, who's one of the Premier League top scorers. They're a very strong side, aren't they? They are a strong side, but... It, it purely depends on which Norwich City we see out there. I think if we see the, the team that played the second half of Arsenal, uh, where we thought Norwich City had turned a corner and had found that balance between the defensive solidity that we wanted from Alex Neal and the creative flair that he's you know most uh, accustomed with, I think we can get something. I think they are beatable. Uh, we did a, gave a really good account of ourselves in the Cup, and although, um, you know... It was slightly different sides there, more of a second team from them, more of a second mm. team from us. Um, I don't think we should be fearful, but we are going to have to up our performance considerably from the Watford game. But, you know, it's, it is a, it's a midday kickoff. I don't know whether that's good or bad. Probably bad. I saw, I saw um, Dan Brigham um, tweet out um, he's really looking forward to the early kickoff because he can get the pain of watching Norwich out, out of the way early on in the weekend. I think you have to approach it knowing... <laughs> Well, obviously, there's going to be some pressure from the fans on the outside in. But I think if you approach it knowing that we try to attack from the outside, I think Everton's got a pretty strong inside. If you look at, you know, you have Stone as the uh, center back. Um, Ross Barkley does a decent job, of course, up top. If we, So rather than attacking through the spine, which is where I think we like to capitalize, so if that means get Redmond out quicker, uh, get... Brady making runs down the side, Wisdom and Olsen coming from the back. I think it could do us some good as long as we got good balls and service into Mbakani. And with, um, with Hulahan injured, we really need to capitalise on our wingers because that's where our creativity is going to be and we need the width that we didn't see against Watford in the second half. Yeah, I think I think we've been slightly let down, haven't we, by, by our wingers in recent weeks. I mean, Brady obviously... Um, it's, it's been pretty decent for, for the majority of the season but I think Redmond has kind of dipped off a bit since I don't really know he hasn't been great for sort of the past well, he, five, six games he has games. been sacrificed to make us a bit more hard to beat recently So yeah he has um, but I think we've also missed um, Jarvis on the left I'm a big fan of Jarvis I thought he brought a, an awful lot of, of, of pace and, and directness to the team that 
that I don't think Brady brings. I, I'm still more of a fan of Brady at left back, um, just because I think the whole team is a bit more balanced with Brady at left back. Still don't think that left hand partnership of Olsen and Brady is quite as good as Brady and uh, Jarvis but obviously we can't play an injured player so that's completely t pointless me talking about but it's going to be very tough um, Everton want to try and challenge for that top six maybe top four I mean there's nothing um, saying that they can't go on and get the top four this season so they're going to be pumped up for it but we have seen that Everton you know aren't the finished package they they um, went was it 3-1 up against Bournemouth um, a couple of weeks ago um, and, and they were 2 up at one point as well and let that slip both times. So, you know, they're not a finished package. They've got a few great players in there, Lukaku, Barkley, uh, Stones. They've got Delefeu. But, I mean, except for that, they're not that great. Uh, so there's certainly room for us to, 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 to take on Everton and give them a really good um, run for their money. And, I mean, we've got a pretty decent record against Everton as well. I mean, I can remember some decent wins and some decent draws against them. So... Let's hope that we can go out there. Seb, didn't you see a tweet earlier saying if our strikers don't score, then it's embarrassing because even Ricky scored something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's a good point, really. <laughs> All right, I just gotta say this is the actual big match in my house. My sister just started liking Everton, so uh, Ooh. when when they had the cup tie, uh, we made a deal. Whoever lost had to do the dishes. For Thanksgiving, so thank you, uh, Wes Houlihan and Redmond for missing. Uh, I spoke to Roberto Martinez after that, actually, and he told me that we deserve to win on the day, and uh, we should be performing higher than we are, so I'm going to say he eats his words for this one, and uh, <laughs> we'll go with either 2-1 late, kind of like that Kai Kamara meets uh, Grant Holt finish a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. Or two two. Either way, I got Christmas dishes on the line now, so I can't be can't have that either. <laughs> well, if if Alex Neal wasn't already under pressure, he is certainly under pressure now, knowing certainly, that you've got yes. dishes to wash if we <laughs> lose this game. Um, any reason your sister started to like? Everything? Yeah, she uh, she got she or goes to it? school in New York City, and there's this bar called Mr. Dennehy's that it's all Everton people. Um, some from Mercy High or Merseyside, a lot of them from Ireland. Uh, they're good people. I went out with them, had a good time. So uh, I guess that's the real reason. I, I guess that's better than me just liking Norwich because I like the jerseys. They're different. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But anyway, that's not the point. Seb, score prediction. Optimistic one. Uh, I'm going to say 2-1. Scrappy last-minute winner. Yep. Pessimistic, based on the fact we never do very well on the telly. We're going to lose 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And it's going to be raining and windy and, and just horrible. Yeah. Can't blame um, the weather, though, can nice. we? Um, yeah, school... Pro uh, you know what? I'm really struggling to get fired up for this game. <laughs> uh, I very Good rarely... Good thing you're not playing there. Do one of your fake ones. Oh, do one of your I... fake ones, Chuck. Every We're going to win 5-0, come on. <laughs> Every week, my score predictions are fake. I just find this <laughs> optimism from the bottom of my stomach, but it's never real optimism. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just in a bad place with Norwich City right now. <laughs> I need some Norwich City counselling. Um, no, right, uh, score prediction. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Um, I think we'll take the lead and then we'll dominate and then we'll concede in the last minute through a mistake, through Sebastian Bassong, and everyone will go into meltdown and everyone will think we're going to get relegated and everyone will be crying for Dave McNally to sign players in January and then we'll only sign... A journeyman on a loan deal in the Johan last of the January transfer window, <laughs> and then we'll finally go down into the championship. It's all going to start this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I mean it's going to be tough, isn't it? And I, I don't know. We're recording this late. I just need some sleep. I'm sure if you ask me in the morning, my score prediction will be more optimistic. But anyway, um, let us know your score predictions, whoever's listening to this. Uh, you can do that either by tweeting us or leaving it in the section on the YouTube comments. Um, once again, thanks for listening to um, a WeChat. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first four episodes. Um, it's been really enjoyable to record, so I just hope um, that's replicated with you guys listening to it. I don't know, maybe it's, it's good company for your morning commute who knows but as long as you're enjoying it that's cool um so yeah i suppose the only thing left to say is thanks seb thanks charlie for uh joining me you're very welcome yes, thank you and 
I wish everyone the best of luck following Norwich City, wherever you may be following them from on Saturday. Um, so yeah, see you later.